Welcome back, friends. Russ Barkley here, wearing my dad plaid, as you can see. Speaking of dad, here's a couple of dad jokes. How do you know if a spider is mad at you? Because he's climbing the walls. Ah, gotta love that one. And what do you call a spider with ten eyes? Spider. Get those ten eyes in there? Glad. Glad you got it. Hope you got a laugh this morning. Okay, we've got three articles to discuss in this week's research roundup. Uh, so not an awful lot going on out there that's of significance, although there is a bunch of research papers being published, which you will find in the thumbnail sketch associated with uh, this video. So uh, let's get started. I think among the most important of the articles that I saw this week uh, is this one, which appeared in the journal um, Nature scientific reports. Uh, and this is a study out of Canada that followed 4,000 Canadian high school students over a one-year period of time and evaluated not, <clears throat> excuse me, not only their ADHD symptoms over that period of time, but also their use of screen time, which included social media, television time, video game time, and computer use. And what they attempted to examine, of course, was the extent to which screen time of various kinds is related to ADHD, both associated with it and maybe exacerbating of it. <clears throat> so it's a very good study, uses a large sample, and it does the appropriate statistics to allow them to reach certain conclusions. Number one, they found that ADHD and screen time showed mutual vulnerability. What does that mean? Means that people with more ADHD symptoms, teenagers in this case, were also more likely to use screen time than other individuals with lesser ADHD symptoms. But vice versa, it also found that if you looked at people and how much screen time they were using, they found that those people were more likely to have ADHD symptoms. So kind of a two-way relationship or comorbidity there, which agrees with something we've seen in many other studies, and that is that people with ADHD, in this case high school students, seem to be drawn more to the use of screens, of screen time. And if we go out and examine how much screen time people are doing, as earlier research shows, those who use screen time more are more likely to also have ADHD symptoms. So very interesting finding there. Now, the beauty of this study is it's longitudinal. It follows the kids for a certain period of time. <clears throat> and what it found is that over the next year of follow-up, that those with ADHD were found to increase their use of screen time, of course, but they also found that among those who used more screen time, ADHD symptoms were exacerbated. This is one of the first studies to actually provide some degree of convincing evidence that screen time may be exacerbating pre-existing ADHD symptoms. And specifically, it found that the screen time most likely to do so was the use of social media, not television, not computers, not even video games, social media. It further found that this link between social media use and exacerbating ADHD symptoms was primarily through the trait of impulsivity. So using more social media seems to increase impulsivity, which seems to increase or exacerbate pre-existing ADHD symptoms. So very important findings there, I think, in showing us that while people with ADHD are more prone to using screen time and vice versa, that the use of screen time may feed back to further exacerbate ADHD symptoms, especially impulsivity. So uh, I thought that was a very interesting finding. Now, let's move on to our next study. Uh, this one appeared in the Journal of Behavioral Addictions, and it was a study done with a small sample of adults with ADHD over in Florence, Italy. And it looked at 
people with ADHD. It assessed their proneness to behavioral addictions over time. And it looked at those who got treated with ADHD medication, specifically methylphenidate, and their behavioral addictions during that one-year follow-up. The long and the short of the study uh, is that it did find that treatment with medication helped to reduce risks for behavioral addictions over the next year compared to those who were not treated with stimulants. So uh, again, it's a small study, so we've got to be careful here. Um, it may or may not generalize to other countries because obviously it takes place over in Italy. <clears throat> but this is one of the first studies I've seen that looked at medication treatment and its effects on possibly reducing risk of behavioral addiction. So uh, a very interesting finding here from our Italian colleagues. Uh, finally, we're going to wrap it up with a third study, this one published in the journal Early Human Development, which uh, comes from Taiwan and uses a very large database, the Taiwan National Health Insurance Research Database. Taiwan has a, uh, a, a sort of a socialized medical approach of national health care. And uh, they looked at the relationship between antibiotic use in children under two years of age and their eventual risk for having ADHD. Uh, they're looking at a sample of more than 1.6 million children in the study who were examined between 2004 and 2012. And what did they find? Bottom line is there was a small but significant increase in the risk of having ADHD if the child had taken antibiotics and especially penicillin and cephalosporin during the first two years of life. Now, before you rush to judgment, this doesn't necessarily mean that there is a causal connection here, although it seems to infer that, because let's not forget what I've talked about in my other video on health outcomes linked to ADHD. People with ADHD tend to be sicker. They tend to have more allergies, more accidents, more injuries, more sick days out, and so on, more sleeping difficulties as well. So all of this might predispose people with ADHD to get illnesses that warrant use of antibiotics. So could go either way here. I'm not saying that early antibiotic use might not have a very small causal effect on risk of ADHD. Perhaps it does. But because the study is correlational, it does not answer that question of causation. And we have other evidence about ADHD showing that they are prone to allergies, infections, injuries, and so on, more than our other people, which would lead them to use more penicillin with these individuals or more antibiotics in general. So uh, interesting study showing a relationship, not necessarily one of causation at this point. So uh, there you have it. That's all I found this week in the research journals that I thought was interesting enough to dedicate a video to. But have a look over in the thumbnail sketch. Maybe you'll see some other research papers that are of interest to you. So thanks again for joining me this week. Hope you don't mind the dad jokes. I sometimes get a laugh out of them myself. Uh, and again, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. And if you are and you like what you're seeing, uh, please recommend us to others. Uh, the excuse me, subscriber base seems to be growing uh, substantially, uh, and I deeply appreciate that and your attention to this channel. So thank you all. I appreciate you tuning in, and I'll catch you next week for another research review. Be well, everybody.